Support the adventures of Change in Stone by visiting patreon.com slash terrible warriors. Back again so soon, stranger? Uh, you want to know how this story ends? You want to know what happened to Change in Stone? Well, then you better sit down. Because this story's going to chill you to your bones. When we last left our so-called heroes, they were descending into the mines, hot in their quarry's tail. They both knew that either their enemy would emerge, or they would, and that there was a damn good chance this mine would be their tomb. But I'll tell you the truth, they were never prepared for what happened to them in that mine. Well, I'll let them tell that story. And you might call them change and stone, but to me, they're the terrible warriors. Hey, terrible listeners. I'm Derek the Bard from Chasing the Muse and the Edmonton Crew. We're back in this, the fourth and final episode of Deadlands, the adventures of change and stone. Uh, we're playing Deadlands, produced by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. And this episode is uh, dedicated to the memory of Margaret Fitzgerald, the mother of Edmonton Terrible Warrior uh, Shane Fitzgerald, who uh, very unfortunately uh, passed about a week before this recording. But she uh, she was a huge supporter of the show and um, her son's involvement in it. And we're... <laughs> She raised a great guy. I mean, we we all think of Shane as a very good friend. No, I like Shane a lot. He's yeah, the and our our most heartfelt condolences go out to him and his family right now. But we uh, we do what we can, and in this case, we continue to play this game that we uh, that we do crazy things. And so uh, I am joined today with Will Mitchell and Wesky on the four hundred fours, and. When last we left our heroes, they were sneaking into vein six of the uh, Comstock Mining Company's uh, Ghost Rock Mine near Virginia City, Nevada, in search of, well, the mysterious Harlan Bliss, architect of pretty much all troubles in their lives, and whatever the hell he's doing in vein six that Some he sort could of seal. Some sort of seal, according to the guy that tried to kill you. So you start going down through it, and it cuts deep into the earth. You guys are going down a ways. And this is before really modern, proper mining equipment. Uh, now, there is an elevator. Yeah. Um, it's largely just run on a pulley system, so there's only so much weight you can take with you. But you're fine. You yeah. don't... The, the weight in this case is like half a ton. Yeah. Uh, but it takes a while to descend, and this mine is eerily quiet and empty. You hear the knocking in the ground and the creaking of the joists that are all set up under this mountain. And you keep going down, and it's slow. Like, this isn't an electric elevator. It's no, a slow descent. Somewhere there's a donkey walking in a circle. <laughs> no, well, it, it's all it's all in a pulley system, oh. really. Uh, it's actually quite ingenious. Like, Comstock hired a genuine, like, actual engineer to build this thing. Yeah. And you slowly go down and down and down. And you're thinking, wow, this is most of the mines go down maybe five, six levels. You're going down further than that. And it starts get being cold, and then it starts getting a bit warmer. Yeah. And you can hear in the distance the moaning of the dam that you recognize as the sound of someone burning ghost rock. And there's burning this, ghost rock underground. Yep. Yeah. That strikes me as it might be dangerous. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, and finally... Elevator stops. You haven't seen a single living soul while you've been down in vein six. Yeah, this is weird. And at the very least, we, you I find that you don't need out. your lanterns down here because there's this strange white glow in the air. You don't really know where it comes from. I'm gonna just adjust my uh, my bandana from my weight from my like neck up over my face. Okay. You ever hear a black lung? I don't want to get a white lung. My thoughts exactly. I'm going to rip off a bit of my like jacket sleeve to make my own because I don't have a bandana like he does. Okay. You can undo your cravat and maybe uh, oh, yeah, that would make, turn it into like a makeshift mask. It's not great. Yeah. It doesn't look as fancy as his bandana. 
but it'll do. You look like you got a cravat wrapped around your face, <laughs> but uh, it'll do. Yeah. And you go through the mine. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's right. You guys stole the guard uniform, so you do have a bandana. Oh, Wes, cool, cool, I'm sorry. Cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, forgot that. <laughs> that's an important fact. It's one thing that's not in my notes, despite the fact that I know the name of Will's gun and the name of the bar that you drink at when you're in D.C. <laughs> These are critical details. Yeah. And the, the glow starts... Uh, you actually see it through the walls. The ghost rock down here is glowing. And it, it's warm down here, and the air feels oppressive, and it kind of stinks. It's dank air that's kind of trickled down from upstairs. And as you get closer, you hear the whirring of machinery. And you come out, and it, it's actually... Um, the room itself, this sort of huge cavern, is recessed into the ground, and it stops, and there's a cliff face, and there's just, like, stairs that have been roughly cut down the side of it and then reinforced with wood. Okay. And th this whole room is lit up. It's bright. You guys haven't really seen uh, electric light. No. Um, I've heard of it. But, so, this is like fluorescently lit. This is the brightest room you've ever been in. Is this As, say, for a room that maybe didn't have a ceiling and it was noon. Yeah, outside of a greenhouse, this is as bright as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. And there are probably about three or four dozen workers uh, mining away at a... It's about 10 or 12 feet high, and it's... Uh, what is it on the ground? It's uh, not stalactite, stalagmite? Uh, yeah, mites on the ground, tight to the roof. Stalagmite uh, made of what looks like pure ghost rock in the center of the room, and... I'm sorry, they're not working on it. They're working on the chain that's set, that's literally like pressed into the floor around it. Um, oh, shit. And it looks like, you're not sure what it is from this distance, but you can definitely see that it's a heavy chain. We're talking like links the size of your arm. And they're working away at it with picks. Like it's like, like the chain's like holding this thing in place almost? Oh, well, you're not really sure. It's just a chain in a circle set into the floor. And there's some machinery going. Um, people are taking... Um, you You would recognize it as maybe some kind of mad science contraption. You, the players, would recognize it as a jackhammer. Nice. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it's like ghost rock driven. And there are lines running water into it. And, like, the steam is coming out of the back. has faces in it. Whoa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's making this unholy moaning and screaming sound as a guy works uh, away to chain. And that he, he gets a... He, he's working at it. He's working at it when you come in. And about 30 seconds later, the drill bit explodes uh, and shatters over his leg. And he's screaming, and they kind of haul him away. And what you hear one of the overseers is like, God damn it, we are running out of hammer bits for this thing. And overseeing it all... Um, he set up basically a pavilion in one corner of the room. Of course. Is Harlan Bliss. And he is a mint... He, you know, you recognize, like, the pewter cup. He's got a mint julep in one hand. Uh, and a stogie in the other. And he's talking to someone beside him who you recognize as Simon Calhoun. Yeah. We gotta get these workers out of here before we start the fireworks. Um. I can get him out, but we've got a tip our hand. Well, it's going to be me if we don't hurry up, because seeing that man walking free is driving me nuts. I walk, I, I walk out, take the gun, point it point blank at the stalagmite, and go, Mr. Bliss, my wife would like to have a word with you, and across the side of my gun is Sarah. Okay, and you open fire? Not a, I, I'm basically holding it hostage. I, I know what ghost. No, I know. I know enough at this point to know that that, that, uh, that would like detonate it or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Um, ghost rock can be unpredictable if you don't use it under controlled circumstances. That's most definitely not a controlled circumstance. So I empty yeah. my entire barrel into it. Then again, though, uh, give me a uh, your your cult. cult yeah, your yeah. cult knowledge check. This thing might be temporarily invincible because that seal. Before. 
Yeah. Uh, seven. Okay. Uh, you know, there's got to be a reason they're working at that seal, mm-hmm. and it might be that they can't cross it. And if they can't cross it, and you know, you notice when the bit exploded, there there isn't any shrapnel inside the uh, inside the chain perimeter. Okay. Fair. Okay, I'm not, I don't think they're the, the, I can shoot it, so that's another question. Then. Do you want to take that action back? I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you, know. yeah, I will let you uh, take that action back on that one. Uh, what else is in this room? Uh, there's some more machinery. There's machinery to pump the water. You, you notice that you, water you, you guys have been following kind of like there's a water pipe um, nice. that came down the shaft. There's no control mechanism going back, right? No, it's just a pipe. It just pumps water down, and then they... So uh, if somebody were to... It's more or less just using the force of gravity at this point. That's what I figured. Why would you spend the pump? What if someone were to perforate this here pipe? Well, it would flood earlier, further away up the the cavern. It sure would, wouldn't it? And this is a big cavern. You you would... You would take a sizable portion of a small lake to be able to fill this Okay, so it would take more time than we have, and possibly more water than we have. Yeah. Yeah, we would need to like dump like an now, entire like. Water I, I want to be clear that this cir- cavern you're in is perfectly circular, and there aren't tool marks on the walls. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, what's the ceiling like? Um. Are we in some sort of inverted pyramid? No. Okay. Cool. Um. But it is a it is a little bit domed on the ceiling. Okay, so this is a chamber. This is awesome. yes. This is and now that you're really kind of taking it in, and you still don't know where that light is coming from. Yeah, is there a, is there a residue on our bandanas? Not really. Ghost Rock doesn't really leave a smoke residue. Okay. Well, um, mm. on I actually, actually have an idea. I'm going to try and bluff my way close to them with the mask up and all that, and let them know that something's happened up top. That's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, you want to get close to Bliss and uh, Calhoun? Yeah, yeah basically, um, going to try and use my sneak check and a bit of bluff to be like. Uh, Mr. Bliss, I'm sorry to let you know that. Uh, okay, give me a roll. Uh, what do you want me to start roll? with start with the sneak check. Sneak, so that's uh, five d ten. It's a good thing I brought a whole haul of d tens to the table after this. Mm-hmm. While he's making the diversion, I'm going to circle around and get my rifle ready. Nine. Yep yeah. that that'll get you across the room. Yeah. I mean, here's the most people are paying attention to uh, to the workers. Yeah. And then my bluff is five d six. Okay. Give me a roll. Let's see if this works. Uh, five. five. Okay, that'll get you the success. That if someone does spot you, you're like, yeah, I got, I got, I got to see Mister Bliss. You know, we we got word from upstairs, and they're definitely paying attention to you more. Because um, I'm a guard. Why am I down here? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm playing on that. Like, I'm like obviously it's something. Important. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, what you're sneaking isn't your body. It's more hiding who you are. Yeah. Different oh. body language, different voice. Exactly. And then, Will, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to sneak to see if I can find a place to hide. Uh, yeah, you can. It'll give me a roll, see if you can hide behind some machinery. That's the plan, so that I can do a little bit of sniping when the time comes. Uh, only 2 uh, Good start. Uh, 15. Oh, yeah. Like a ghost. You're not going to have height. That's okay. But you're definitely going to have cover. Uh, and then give me a search check, Will. Sure, man. Or spot, or... I can never remember what word each game uses. Uh, five. Um, you spot someone who looks kind of familiar to you from one of your previous exploits. Oh, boy. Um, that man over there, um, who is looking very nervous, like he doesn't want to be here... Is far too short and fat to be a minor... Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. You do recognize Mr. Strix, who has concealed himself with a very, very bushy beard that looks completely natural, despite the fact that you've never seen the man able to grow anything beyond a mutton, half a mutton chop before. Hmm. Uh, and he might, in fact, have something stuffed in his belly to give himself a bit of, more of a paunch. How peculiar. So on my way to my cover, uh, perhaps from my cover... Yep. Hey, Strix. And he looks over. He starts, and he looks over at you. And it takes him a minute. Mr. Stone? Indeed. What the hell are you doing here? What the hell are you doing here? I suspect the same thing as you. They can't open that their seal, man. 
Well, I can see they can't do it now, but they're certainly trying. No, you don't understand. They cannot open that seal. Why? Why do you think, you idiot? Uh, well, I suppose it's something that the Lord made. Probably not a good idea to unmake it. Yeah, you lock something in. Something greater than you locks something in. What do you think? You think you ought to open that lock? No, I reckon that ain't wise. Yeah, We're I... just here for bliss. <laughs> I hope you brought a whole hell of a lot more than that pea shirt of yours. Uh, brought a bigger one. <laughs> Pick up my rifle. The easy here will have to do. You better aim for the damn head. Oh, I don't reckon he's going to be walking away from this. I can't keep saving you two for you two to... Oh, spit. That means it changes here too, isn't it? Uh, as a matter of fact, I sort of point to where it changes stumbling <laughs> up the pavilion. You Tris better spill your guts fast. Okay, well, we're going to cut over to change as you go up to the pavilion, and uh, Bliss looks up at you, and he kind of puts a stogie aside, and he lifts his mint julep. Now, what are you doing here? Sir, sorry to bother you there, sir, but uh, it appears that the change in stone are up top, and they've lit your guard shack on fire. Uh, what would you want me to do? <sighs> And he grimaces, and for just half a second, you get that flash in his face of, like, the dead cavernous eyes and the the pale pulled-back skin. (sighs) Calhoun? Why are those two men not dead yet? Mr. Bliss, I sent a bomb up to their room. I sent someone up to shoot them. And they are still alive, and they are still vexing me. And he spins, and it's one of those too quick to be human. Sp- it's like almost CGI stop motion spins, yeah, yeah. where one moment his head is looking forward, the next is suddenly looking to the side. And even Calhoun takes a step back at that. And you've never seen Calhoun take a step back from anything. Yeah. So- Calhoun, you will go deal with it now. See that those two men are pushing up daisies before the day is done. And he, like his voice is taking on this weird tenor to it. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Bliss. And um. Calhoun takes a look at you, and we'll see if he actually does... We'll give him a momentary moment to see if he can oh, recognize no. you. Got you covered, <laughs> what was your bluff check? Um, it wasn't very good. Sorry, what was your stealth check? You uh, rolled... It was a seven, I thought? Yeah. Oh, you lucky motherfucker. <sighs> Calhoun was never one of the brightest or most observational of sorts. He's just a mean bastard who's really good on a sword, with a sword and on a horse. He looks at you for a second. He says, well, what are you doing up here? Get, get with me, boy. We, uh, we need some help. Can we take the workers and put out the fire? Take the workers? No, you can't take the workers. Come on. Sir, sir there's not enough people up top. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> persuasion 60 <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Nine. No. Unless he gets a six. Oh, oh, dude, Calhoun rolls really shitty. He didn't roll anything above a three on either of those rolls. He said all his good rolls beat me up. However. Uh oh. Oh. Boss man. I'm gonna say it right now. Boss man has really, really good stats. Boss man only rolled an eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Um, yeah. Very well, no more distractions. Take those five! And he, uh, Bliss just points at five workers, um, who are. Uh, Tending wounds from exploded jackhammers? No, uh, they're, uh, well, one of them is, the other, the others are just like, uh, getting a new load of equipment. Oh no, they're getting a new, uh, bit fed into the, uh, the jackhammer. Yeah. Take those five and see it done! And he points at Calhoun, if you fail me. I know. No, you don't. And his he bares his teeth, and for just a second there's that flash again, and his teeth are all yellow. The gums are completely pulled back from them. You fail me, Calhoun. I will eat your soul. And Calhoun books it. 
Yeah, I go and I hustle with them. And I'm like, thank you, Mr. Bliss. Thank you, thank you. And I'm like, get. And he just makes a gesture. Yeah, I grab the people. So what I'm doing is I'm following along. Yep. Um, are I'm, you going to shoot Bliss in the back? Uh, sorry, are you going to shoot Calhoun in the back? Oh, I don't think that's really my character style. What I think I mean, this is my character style is getting him on that elevator, shooting out the uh, the pulley, so he just shoots straight to the top. Then how are you guys going to get out? We'll figure that out after we kill him. If it only takes a half a ton, there's got to be another way for the rail cars to go up. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> It might be more of a ton or something yeah. like that, but, but even then, like, or yeah. we'll take a la- ladder or something. Yeah, one all... line cart can weigh in excess of many tons. Yeah, well, fair enough. I mean, yeah. it, it it is sufficient to get a mine cart up. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you get him in there. Give me a shoot and roll. <laughs> and as soon as I, I'm like, hi, buddy, Brad. <laughs> Give me a roll. Uh, okay, so that's three d eight, sixty eight. Please don't miss. Yeah, this is where I roll, like, all ones, right? Like... Uh, there's another D8. Yeah, I think that's all the D8s I had on the table. Okay. Oh, these two. oh yeah, and those two. So far, six. Ooh, there we go. There's eight. an eight. Sixteen. Sixteen. Nineteen. Oh, yeah, that's going to do it. And I'm now, sure he sees me, too. Hi! Bang! <laughs> yeah, and you just hear, as the... As it goes up, and it's going to shoot up like a cannon. Um, James? Call it high or low, odd or even. Uh, we're going to go with low, even. Oh. That's a five. Um, as it hits the top, part of the scaffolding collapses for the elevator. Oh, no. Uh, you create a lot of noise. That's... Bliss look okay from from where they are. What you see is he goes over. He t- um, I'm sorry, Will because radio the the magic of radio. No one can see me pointing. Yeah, uh, no one can hear me pointing either. I should make pointing sounds. Um, <laughs> you see, uh, you see, change goes over and he talks with Bliss and Calhoun. Bliss looks angry, gestures around. There's more talking, more gesturing. Calhoun and Change grab a couple of workers who are working on reloading the jackhammer and run off. About 60 to 90 seconds later, you you <gasps> you hear mach- uh, the sound of a machine gun and then boom, a booming that reverberates through the entire mine. <laughs> and Strix looks at you and he he starts explaining and he basically says he kind of just kind of parse this in my head. I don't know exactly where that seal came from, but it was old when the world was new. Someone or something, I don't know, may, call it God, call it angels, call it Manitou, call it good spirits or good Manitou or whatever word you want to use, locked something in there. That ghost rock, that's something. The Bliss breaks that chain, and what's inside Bliss gets to that ghost rock. And we are going to have a whole new world of hurt coming down on us, boy. That's not something that I can stop. Though I am hoping that I can stall it long enough for someone else who knows how to, to do it. But there ain't... No one left who knows how, boy. There ain't no great wizards. There ain't no Merlin. There ain't no King Arthur. There's just... There's just men like me with a pocket full of card tricks, and that is not enough. Well, Strix, old buddy. They say when you got a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And then, and then, uh, 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 when you hear hammer, nail, machine gun fire, explosion, Bliss jumps out of his seat, drops his mint julep. Uh, The workers are like freaking out. The rumbling reverberates through the mine. Um, Then the water starts uh, gushing down, and it's not enough that it's going to drown you guys, unless you waited like a day or two. After the after like our third day trap down here, it's a problem. But right yeah. now, it's just a warning sign. Yeah. Um. Oh, and Wes, give me a roll to run away from that. <laughs> uh, what do you want to re-roll? Uh, nimbleness. Yeah, let's go nimbleness. Okay, that'd be two uh, d ten. That's a ten. That's oh. an eleven. You book it. 
<laughs> Come around the corner, like mass down. Yeah, machine Gatling pistol in your hand. Smoking and still spinning a little. At this point, I actually need to look up what Bliss's powers do. Yeah. Well, I hope they don't make my mutable. <laughs> yeah. Um. Might. Well, might. funny story about what Bliss is. Okay, so at this point, the thing inside Bliss drops all pretenses that he's not a walking corpse possessed by a demon. Yeah. So he's a walking corpse possessed by a demon. Uh, I will reveal to you now. Actually, Wes, give me an occult knowledge roll. All right. I have not had good luck on these, so maybe this time. Now that it counts. You figured out not to shoot a gun at the thing in the center of the room. Yeah, that does count for something, to be fair. Uh, it's actually 46. 48, I mean, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it sounds so good. Nope. I mean, you guys know from previous experience that Bliss has magic power. We know he's some sort of wizard. Yeah, he's a magic magic man. Yeah. He's like David Bowie, just without the, the pants bulge. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see he here. Wishes. Yeah. Okay, so he has to attack someone first to eat their soul. And the it only works if he attacks someone with claws. Super glad I'm hiding on the other side of the room. <laughs> and we're going to be nice and say that he can't turn into a ghost. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. That's She's fine. She's about to get real. Yeah. Bliss stands up. I'm going to give him other supernatural powers, because I think there was a book of the Harrowed at some point that had other shit in it. And he walks forward, and as he does, you guys see all pretense that, as I said, he is not, in fact, just a demon and a dead spirit inhabiting the same corpse. His eyes have basically been gouged out of his skull. He seems to see fine, though. Of course. His skin is pulled back tight like a little bit of mummification might have gone on at some point. His gums are pulled down from his teeth. His hair is wisps hanging off of his skull. His clothes are still in great condition, though. Yeah. And his fingernails are about inch and a half long claws growing off of his hands. And as the workers are starting to freak out, he grabs one of them and screams at them. Get back to work. And then he's going to try and use his, we'll call it supernatural powers of persuasion. Let's see if Bliss can zombify people. Oh, shit. That's a lot of tens for zombifying. That's a 19. Jesus. Um, half the workers literally, and you guys can feel it echoing in your heads. Stop, stand still, and like... Um, Start to work. And... Like clockwork figures on one of those old fashioned uh, clocks begin hammering mechanically away at the chains. And Bliss looks around and he sees you, Wes, because you're screaming at him. Yeah. Well, I want to kill him. He killed my wife. Yeah. And he points a clawed finger. You boy. I told you when I saw you, I was going to make you all kinds of dead. And I told you that my wife would see you again. (laughs) Shh. Well, count the bullets! <laughs> You're definitely going to hit him before he can reach you, so give me a shooting check. Yeah, I don't mind if I do. That's uh, shooting automatics. That is uh, 68. And do we have another D? There it is. It's clear. It's invisible. Um, so that's, that is a 7. You'll hit him. It's not going to be a great hit. Yes. Roll a D20 to see where you hit him. Uh, 12. Wait, yeah, 12. It'd help if I didn't put the cheat sheet under the book. That would be, that would be great. Okay, you're going to hit him in an arm. Cool. You're, you're going to weigh him. Uh, and that's what? Uh, 3d6. 3d6. Okay, so that's uh, 9 11. plus 11 points. 11? Okay. Yeah, you hit him in an arm. Yeah. He doesn't seem to care. Of course not. Of course he not. doesn't bleed. If anything, you blow a bit of dust out of him. Yeah, it, when he had blood, he didn't care. Now he really doesn't care. Um, I would like to pop up with my trusty rifle Daisy uh, and fucking Winchester repeater unload as much as I can into him. Okay, I am going to. You're only going to get. Initiative. You're only going to get one shot. No, I'm going to let okay. a couple surprise act, a couple actions go off this round. Just as uh, Bliss is a little distracted. I need three more d10s. If you got them. 
Um, I think at this point as well as I pop up, um, I'm going to sort of whisper to Strix as I'm standing up. I hope you got some tricks up your sleeves to help attune you dance a little better. Yeah. <laughs> um, show me hit. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to spend your uh, white chip on that to give yourself an extra die? Um, no, no, no. Or I, you want to save I, it? I'm asking Strix to use... if he's He any doesn't magic. have anything to make you shoot better. I don't know that. I, I'm hoping he just going to make my gun magic. That's what mm. I'm aiming for, but... Being a simple oh, there's gunslinger... There's a 10. I just don't know. 14. Okay, well, that'll get you one raise. Okay. Uh, where's I will let you do two shots, and we'll call it a repeater for the purposes of this. Also because they're cool. Um, no, no, you get that's the oh, you get two, you score two hits so on it. Yeah, two. twice. Yep. Uh, that's a five and a nineteen. Sweet. So you're gonna hit him in the lower guts and the upper guts. Uh, or is that a twenty? That's nineteen. But do I have one of those things I can move it one or? Yes, you do because you got a race. You want to move it to a twenty? I'm gonna shoot him in his fucking face. Okay. Yeah, you hit him in the guts and then you hit him in the face. Uh, roll me forty six twice over. Mm-hmm. Let me know the results of each roll. Not don't add them together individually. Okay. Um. So ten, twelve. Okay. And no whammies in the face. Uh, that's more like it. Uh, Fifteen. Okay. He, um, yeah, you put one right between his eyes. Yeah. So boom in the belly, and then boom in the eyes. Double tapped him. Yeah, of course. Uh, and he bends backwards at uh, with the shot to the face, and then he straightens up, shoots out an arm, grabs a worker. Um, and then literally just pulls the worker in front of him, and you can see the worker's soul come out of his lips as uh, as Bliss breathes it in. Oh, right, and, uh, man. And the bullet comes out of his head and draw like Wolverine in the X-Men, Yeah, and the hole closes. We gotta empty out his larder change. And he throws the worker aside, and the worker's body is just desiccating. Yeah. Bullets ain't going to kill him, you idiots. It's just going to slow him down. Well, if you have a better idea. Uh, okay, now we're going to go. I'm into- keeping him real slow. While y'all do the thinking. <laughs> we're going to go into initiative at this point. Yeah. So give me your quickness checks. Quickness. Sorry, your, uh, your, your quickness. Um, I'm going to get my rifle out. I got 19. Jeebus! Uh, so you get one for succeed, uh, one for rolling, one for succeeding, yeah. uh, one for the first raise, and one for the second raise. So you're rolling, you're pulling four cards. Nice. Uh, four. You pull one card. That's the usual. And we're going to see how many Strix pulls. Uh, six, ten. He's going to pull three. And we're going to see how many Bliss pulls. I'm gonna go. What 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 die do I think Bliss has in quickness? I'm gonna give him eight, and he gets two. Somehow, okay. both aces. <laughs> It'd be your luck. You gotta love the images on these cards too. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Okie dokie. So, we have at this point Will leading with a queen, followed by Strix with an 11, who is tying with Bliss on an 11, and Wes trailing on a 6. Yep. You shooting him again? Hell yes, I'm shooting him again. Uh, all the shooting. So much shooting. Um, okay. Because uh, it'll slow him down, and that's really all I'm going to be able to do. Uh, oh, that's not nearly as good. That's a nine. Nine will do it. Nine will hit. Nine will play. Won't give you a raise, but it'll... Uh... That is a natural two. You're going to shoot him in the foot. Yep. He needs those feet, though. That's 46, because it's rifle. Uh, so we're looking at 13. Sixes explode. Oh, sixes explode. Okay. Uh, so that was... was that? 17, 17, 20, 24. Yeah, 24. Wow. Well, you uh, you blow a good chunk of his knee out. Yeah. <laughs> that slowed him down enough. And then we're going to go over to our good buddy, Mr. Strix. 
who I'm not going to play a full poker hand for, because fuck that shit. Although, that is one of the coolest parts of this session. It's true. Um, the reason we didn't do... The reason neither of these PCs are wizards uh, in the system, or hucksters, is because to do that, you actually have to play a game of poker against the GM. And if you win, your powers work. Yeah. So, Mr. Strix uh, mutters to himself, shuffles his hands... A whole, like, line of glowing playing cards just flicker in between them mm -hmm. as he draws himself an invisible hand. And he rolls an 11. Yup. He is going to... Um... And he actually screams out, Aces and eights, fucker, read him and weep! Uh, as he slams the phantom cards on the ground, and the ground rumbles, and a sheet of uh, rock flies up under Bliss on an angle, flinging him backwards, uh, back into his pavilion where he lands. Nice. And at that point, Bliss goes. Oh, shit. However, he had the black um, 11 rather than the red 11. Yeah. So he goes second in that tie. He's going to dig himself out of the tent and shred the tent apart. And oh, boy, how is he getting madder? Good. Uh, and he's going to shout at the workers again. He's going to shout, keep working, you sons of bitches. Ten. Nineteen again. All the workers are now working. And they are centering all their efforts on one section of chain. Yeah, they're perfectly coordinated. It's... You kind of wonder why he didn't do this before. And that must cost them something. Well, you notice the workers are all bleeding out of their eyes and ears. Yeah, and, like, their hands are where they're gripping their tools, like, are starting to, like, like erode. Cause exactly. They're, they're not doing anything to protect themselves from the impact. Yeah. You get the impression he might have only been up to this for a couple days anyway, so... Yeah. It may just be that he didn't want to destroy his workers before he needed them for something else. Exactly. Like food, apparently. Yeah. Well, there is that. And, you know, as, as any immortal demon trapped inside of a human body, time is on his side, right? Yep. Okay, uh, who's up? Uh, that would be next, Mr... Uh, well, you got a 10, and Mr. Strix has a 10. I got a black 10. He has got a red 10. So he is going to go next. Um... He's going to try and mess with the workers. So he's off doing his own thing right now. That makes sense. Um, okay, so... He's just, he starts slinging spells at them to try and get them to uh, break out of it. Yeah. So shooting this guy is definitely only slowing him down. Um, is there any, like... I guess there's no lanterns down here. There's no light. I'm trying to think of other things we can do to him. Um, well, I mean, keep in mind, he definitely felt that headshot. Oh, for sure. I'm sure if we do this enough, I would, I'd, you know, turn him into a pile of meat, which is certainly an option. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play to my strengths. I'm just going to keep shooting him. But in a shout-out to Change... Change! Whatever the hell he's made out of is probably what that chain's made out of. Use that crazy contraption of his! You're going to attack the chain? No, 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 no. Hit him in the head with the jackhammer. Oh, well, cool. Okay. That's not what I'm doing. I'm shooting, I'm shooting yeah. Bliss. Uh, now, do you want to cult shot the head? Um, if you cult shot the head, I forgot what happens when you hit a head. When you hit the head, you get deal two extra damage dice. Oh, cool. But you're at a minus six to hit. Uh, I'm not going to cult shot him just yet. Oh, well, you know what? Fuck it. I will. You want to throw that chip in? Uh, oh, I have to spend the chip to cult no, shot. No, but you could throw an extra die onto your roll. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just going to cult shot him straight up. Uh, well, that was... Ten. Oh, Roll ten. that ten. Come on. Uh, I got a fifteen. Which so it's a nine. nine. You which hit him in the head. I hit him in the head. So roll, uh, 5d6. 5d6, because it's a rifle. I'll use this so they match. And, yeah, it's okay. Um, I got twelve. You know what? I'm going to... Put that back. I'm gonna put that up to a 14, nice. and we'll give him the the extra uh, wound in there. Cool. Boom to the head. 
boom to the head, and his head snaps back again. Yeah, just as he gets up out of the pavilion, bam, and down he goes. He, yeah, you knock him back down. Uh, okay, so that's... All right, on seven, Mr. Strix is doing his thing. Uh, so our next is a six. Wes. Just because the, 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 apparently my character is like, one, he hates this guy so much. Two, his partner has given him some pretty sad advice in the past. I pick up the jackhammer and try and jam it into the guy's chest. Okay, so you're going to give me a... Hmm. You know what? I'm going to ask you to make me a vigor check. Okay, what is vigor? Vigor, you have 2d6 in it. Okay. Now, you, do you want to add your... Uh, if you add your white chip, you add plus one die to your roll. If you add the blue chip, you uh, once you've rolled... You add another die of that type and add that to your highest number. I'm going to use the white chip this time. Add another die? Yeah. Okay. 3d6. That's a six. Nine. That'll hit him. Not in the head, but that'll hit him. That'll do. Yeah, well, I mean... Any part's really good at this point. Okay, give me a hit location. Some sort of magic jacket. Uh, We're using my strange d20. Nine. Lower guts. Nine will hit him in the lower guts. So that's a very appropriate place to put a jackhammer. In. Yeah. Also, you're not you're only able to get the jackhammer. You know, so high. It's yeah. pretty heavy. Yeah. It's also not water cooled anymore. So rad. <laughs> so okay, we're gonna. But yeah, if this thing can cut through magic chains from the bottom. To the I back. can't even decide what damage type because I didn't expect that you'd use it for this. I'm gonna give it two d ten. Nine. Okay, well, it deals him a wound. Yeah. It's also unwieldy as <laughs> shit. You're also now right in front of him. Yeah. And he's going on six. And on his six, he's going to take a swipe at you. Where is he? D10. Oh, shit. <laughs> 19. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> so, he takes a swipe at you with his claws. And I die on the floor. We've got so many D10s on this table at this point. I got it. Okay, great. And we'll see what his hit location is. He gets a plus two because he's fighting. 11. So that's going to hit you on the arm. And then his damage is going to be, let's call it. As many D8s. Call it 3D8 plus 3. Yikes. 10, 11, 14, rolled an 8. 17! That's going to deal you... Fuck it, I'm going to call... Yep, yeah, you hit two wound levels to the arm, Wes. And... You lose ten wind. Um, okay, so I'm at two wind. Now here's the. You can spend the uh, blue chip. You will negate all the damage from this attack. Is your other option? No. Okay. I, I'm still conscious. Um, where's the wounds you, on here? You are. Uh, you're gonna have to write it down on the side. Okay. Uh, to your arms. Uh, you are a minus two to all your actions now. Okay. Cool. Shitty, shitty. Uh, Wes, <laughs> you are injured now. Will, you still have two cards left. Okay, I got two cards left. Let's play these wisely. Um, so the jackhammer didn't seem to have any special effect on him. Well, it's more the jackhammer looks like it's a really nasty weapon if you can wield it correctly. Neither of you were particularly skilled in wielding a jackhammer. Yeah, I did not take weapon proficiency jackhammer. I'm sorry, guys. Hey, man, me either. What were you thinking? Um... Well, you know, shooting him has been working much better than Strix indicated it would. I will see if I can get him to release my buddy by shooting him again. Well, this is the old Evil Dead approach. Shoot it till it stops being funny, and it's never not funny. Exactly. Um, because you blew that bitch away. Uh, All oh, right. re-roll that detent. Yes, that. indeed. That's an 11. That'll hit and give you a raise. Yes, please. Um, nope. Hit, hit location. Oh, hit location first. Uh, up or down by one. Uh, I got a 16. So you could boost that. 
Doesn't matter. It'll still be upper guts. Upper guts. Uh, so, yeah, boom, boom into the chest. So, 46. Jeez, what am I doing? There we go. Uh, that is 18. Boom. That'll send him back a few steps. <sighs> yeah. Um, hopefully uh, a few steps away from change. Yep, a few, few steps away from change. you got one more attack. Oh, yeah, sure. And I will do it again. Uh, at some point, my rep is going to run out of bullets. Probably after this shot. That seems reasonable. Uh, I got a nine. It'll hit. Okay. Roll for hit location. Uh, that is, what is that? That is a, uh, uh, that might be the one. Let me. It's a weird squiggle. Oh, that's the 20. Oh! <laughs> Eat shit. Okay, give me the roll and add two dice to it. So you're rolling uh, 66. Uh-huh. No, that's only five. That was a one. Okay, so... Uh, ten. Uh, that is another 18. To the head. To the head. Boom! <laughs> Yep. Okay. If he was a regular person, you would have splattered his brains out by now. Oh, yeah. Long ago. The cantaloupe-sized hole in the back of his head doesn't seem to bother him too much. It makes him really angry. Nice. Uh, Strix is not getting much luck out of... Uh, at the end of the round, Strix is not getting a lot of luck into stopping the workers. And you can actually see under the force of their precise mechanical blows that are slowly killing them, one of, part of the chain is going red hot. Take away their picks, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, um, Bliss is going to try another approach entirely. Oh boy. He's going to try and be real, real, real quick. So, anyway, let's, uh. Let's roll another initiative. Yep. Oh, yes. Come on. Yes! There we go. <laughs> 23. Three sixes on the first roll. Uh, uh, like, okay, yep. Yeah. Okay, so, so, nine. Nine. You got 23? I got 23. I rolled a 12 and then an 11. Okay. You're gonna splatter him at this point just because you're gonna be able to pump enough bullets into him? Just as he's fast. He's lying on the ground twitching. Yeah, so yeah. Empty out Daisy, chuck it over my shoulder, out comes the pit, out comes Petunia, and then just like approach, and every time he switches, bam! Like every time he moves, just shooting him. <laughs> I basically would like, in my vision, all I was gonna do is I was gonna use the blue chip, just basically foot on chest, full auto. Whoa! I'll take it. <laughs> yep, he's splattered. Yeah. Alright, now Strix, you let me believe that this ain't gonna keep him dead, nor is it gonna keep them from stopping. I don't know how to take the spell off them. I've tried everything. Can you keep him dead or at least hamburger? I don't know. Maybe. What are you going to do to him? Them. The workers. Going to bust their fucking tools. Okay. Um, how are you going to get the tools away from them? They are literally, like, undeterred, and they are just going at it. Um, basically, I'm going to pick up a spare pick. And just counter swing. Like they, on their back swing, I'm gonna hit That would require you getting into the, uh, finding some way to pass the circle. Oh, they're in the circle? No, no. Like, you'd have to, to get around them to be able to counter swing, you'd have to be able to get into the circle. Oh, wait, what? They're all standing around one little point in the circle. Oh, I gotcha. And and there's like 10 of them, 10 or 15 of them. Mm. Like, you can't get into them. They're forming a semicircle around it. Okay, well, then uh, I'm going to find a bucket, and I'm going to keep that chain cool with all this water that's coming up to our You animals. still have to get past them. Can't just splash it? No, they're, they're going through the water anyway, and it's... Of course. They're, it's starting to break. Well, I guess I'm going to have to beat up some mooks. <gasps> Okie dokie. Now, we could get into some pointless dice rolling as you try to beat up 15 guys. Well, I, I suppose, do they turn if you mess with one of them? No. Oh, then I just need to beat up 15 guys one at a time. That, but they will resist you if you start trying to pull them away from the circle. Hmm. Are they wearing pants? They're wearing, like, coveralls. I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I'm going to take my redundant belt, and I'm going to garrot these motherfuckers. Just pass them out. They're, like, they'll still resist you. Um, hmm. 
you may actually have to shoot them. Shit. Don't want to just kill these guys. It's either that or that thing gets out. You know, I heard a story about a guy running one of them streetcars in San Francisco about this. I do not like these choices. Reload. Click. Whatever you idiots are going to do, you better do it now. Not sure that chain's going to take much more. No, I, I refuse to believe I'm going to have to kill these men. Okay, I, I, I understand and I get it. I just turned fucking... <laughs> Okay, you, you saw me. You, you just gun them all down. I, I point the, the full auto pistol. Do, do you stop me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stone, Stone's gonna push his hand down. Um, I'm gonna. I'm trying to make him aim low. Make least. a fighting check. Oh, fuck yeah! They're making man, fighting checks great. against each other oh, now. Then now this is starting to feel more like season finale. Uh, <laughs> this is starting to get a definite supernatural feel to it now. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 where's fighting? Fighting brawling. You were gonna kick my ass. <laughs> yeah, fighting brawling. So you got four d ten. Where's my three d eight? Come on. <laughs> oh, you got me. Oh yeah, no. Uh, West got a nine. Yeah, you, know you, what? you want to throw was, in for one more die? On Bliss, but it turns out that he could just be, you know, superior firepower wins the day against him. <laughs> but against, like, human evil and, and hopelessness. Superior I'm, firepower and shitty initiative draws win the day. <laughs> yeah, but, but against, you know, like a, like a, 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 a ethical dilemma, you're going to have to burn a chip. Give me one. Okay, roll one more uh, d8. Let's oh, see if you can beat a nine. Come on. Come Moment on. of truth. Moment of truth. Oh, okay. No. Oh. Um, Wes, I need you to roll this uh, d20 for me ten times. Oh, come on. Remember, I'm trying to hit low. Um, 19. Maybe we triple him. Okay. Um, 16. 12. 10. 8. 15. 1. <laughs> That's good. And, uh... 20? Yeah, that was a 20. Oh, shit. You spray them, you manage to take most of them down, you hit the last guy in the head, and he falls onto the chain, and his body breaks the circle. <laughs> and as you're over there, Bliss pulls himself up, and there ain't much of him, like, left, but he's laughing, and he's laugh he's, like, coughing at water as he laughs. I take the damage and just bang. It it doesn't matter. He gets his soliloquy out. Ah, oh, damn it! Uh, a righteous man broke the circle by spilling innocent blood. <laughs> you sons of bitches don't get it. I played you, played you all along. You can't kill what's already dead. Listen up, you here asshole. If it's righteous blood. That broke this here circle. Maybe it's Rush's blood that can bring it back. Rufus, I'm coming. Are you going to stop I'm him? I'm definitely going to stop him. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, the chain's not broken, just the effect is broken. Uh, yeah, well, so, uh, the seal is broken. Yeah. You got a not. I'm going to give that to you. Um, change wrestles the gun away from stone. Damn it! What else we got to do? Uh, as the stone in the center of the circle begins glowing. <laughs> Strix? What the hell else do I don't, I don't know! Can you get us out of here? I, I, I can try! And he's gonna try. Mm. Uh, he, he gets his phantom cards, and he starts playing... And this look of horror spreads across his face. And Bliss laughs. I can see the man it to you, old fool. <laughs> you done busted on a pair of twos. And um, Strix, like this look of utter horror falls over his face. Oh, and you see your ghost materializes. And the ghost it has its cards out against him. And it's got four aces on the table. And it walks into him. Oh, no. no. Oh, shit. 
and the crystal glow, like the ghost rock uh, stalagmite glows and glows and glows and everything goes white. And that's when the credits roll. And then the po- in the post credit scene, you two haul yourselves out of the mine. You are battered. You are bloody. Soaked. 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 Yeah. Uh, like, you wake up, you're floating um, at the top of the mine shaft. And you pull yourselves out and you look out over. And it, there's a ruined city where Virginia City used to be. And you, it ta- you can't even process what you've seen. Just, like, fall to the knees. Yeah. It's, uh, the, you see, like, a fallout landscape. Of just like bombed out ruins. You have never seen either a city this big or subject to this amount of destruction. And overhead, um, you see like a field of stars um, and like a partially broken moon. And then, to quote a far greater person than I could ever be. I drop to my knees and yell, I slept too long! (laughs) (laughs) From Army of Darkness, the director's cut. (laughs) Change in Stone will return in. Deadlands. Hell on Earth. And then like some... uh, And the whole series it had up until this point... This like Western uh, saloon music theme to it. In comes heavy metal. <laughs> yeah. And in the distance, we see like smoke coming up, and like, hey, here comes riders. It's a bunch of fuckers on like on motorcycles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. That was the fourth and final episode of Deadlands: The Adventures of Change and Stone. I have been your marshal for these past four episodes. Derek the Bard for Chase of the Muse, running Deadlands by the Pinnacle Entertainment Group. You should check them out online. Their Kickstarter just went, like, crazy amounts of cash to fund the new, reprinted, classic Deadlands. And I am joined with... Will Mitchell. Last gun. And if you go and uh, subscribe to our Patreon over at patreon.com slash terriblewarriors, you can get the debrief that's going to come out after this one where we're going to talk about what we just played. And until next time, be seeing you. And that brings a conclusion to the adventures of Change and Stone. Or is it... We'll definitely be returning to that campaign sometime in the future. And of course, all new episodes of The Terrible Warriors comes out every Monday and Thursday. And if you are a Patreon supporter, come back tomorrow. Check out our Patreon page on Friday because the debrief episode will be released for you to listen to. You can hear Wes and Will and Derek discuss the game and their plans for the future. We're doing a lot of genre hopping on the podcast now with The Matrix and with Deadlands. It's giving me ideas about what to do with After the Bomb. Come back on Monday. We've got another episode of Ravenloft for you. And as we enter into November and into a new month, I must thank all of our Patreon supporters for making another month successful for us. You are allowing us to try new things and those theme songs you're listening to and bringing on guests onto the show and doing stuff like what we did with Scion last month in October. And if you want to be a named non-player character in one of our future games, well, then head to patreon.com slash terriblewarriors. We just finished recording a few new episodes of Embers of the Jedi that one of our Patreon supporters whose reward was being a guest on our show. And don't worry, we we didn't kill him in the first episode. I mean, we want to make sure they actually think they're going to live, right? So for a peek ahead at what games we have prepared for you, check out TerribleWarriors.com, click on the schedules page. And until we meet again on Monday for Ravenloft... Thank you for supporting and thank you for listening. Thank you for mentioning us in your tweets and in those other channels you use to tell people that you're listening to our podcast. It's through your support and through your word of mouth that the Terrible Warriors will continue to grow. And it is in doing so that I thank you for being a Terrible Warrior. Terrible Warrior.